Hey, what's happening, Roland? Well, today's Friday and time for the weekly update. And right now, I'm down in Isla Mirada, Florida at my family uh, place down here on, on, uh, in the Keys. Well, we'll get to that in a minute, but first I'm going to talk about what happened last week. I got on a plane Friday morning and uh, went up to Detroit, Michigan for the Bass Pro Shop U.S. Open. Kevin Van Dam and Mark Zona, we were all up there to help sign pictures and autographs and talk to the people. And they had a record turnout. They had actually a record uh, amount of fish being caught. There were 45 teams that caught smallmouth bass stringers over 20 pounds. And a funny thing, Mark Zona's son actually won the tournament with 24 pounds. So that was really, really a, an outstanding trip. And I got back home Sunday, and then I started editing. I did a lot of editing with my show and stuff. And, uh, so a, a, all week I just kind of just, I didn't do much fishing until yesterday and I took a little canoe, kind of similar to this canoe, and I, t I went into some of the local canals right there at, uh, uh, in Naples, Florida, and we caught a bunch of bass, a bunch of small bass, it wasn't really good, and right, it was raining, and Scott called, my son Scott, he said, Dad, Dad, there's a Cabrera snapper bite down in the Keys. We're down at the family properties. Come on down. We'll take my big Freeman and we'll get out and, and get after him. Well, I came, drove on down here, and I, I just want to tell you real quick, here's the captain. Here's Scott's captain right now. Hey, what you doing, Sam? Good, good to see hey, you. Hey, well, I was telling him about the Cabrera snapper fishing we did last night. We we didn't, it got rough. Half the yeah. people got sick, and, and uh, we just didn't catch them. But tonight, we're going to have another day. Yep, that's the nice thing about fishing. There's always tomorrow. Now, what do you think about the uh, dolphin fishing today? Uh, I think it's going to be good. We got a okay. little bit of wind still. Uh, I think it's laid down a little bit. Okay. And okay. Uh, wind is actually good for the dolphin okay. a lot of times. So. Well, we're going to go out. So Sam is going to be captain of the boat. My, my son Scott has this new Freeman. It's a it's a 42 foot boat. Look at that big four big engines on it. If you ever seen anything like it, I think something else. Well, that's what we went out in last night. We fished till one o'clock in the morning. We didn't catch a whole lot of fish. But today we're going to have a, a whole different ball game with this big boat. I got all my AVET reels and Scott's got all his big spinning tackle and we're going to go after Dolphin today. So that's, that's going to be the update. I'll give you that update this week. But let me tell you a little bit about this property. <clears throat> this property is some kind of unique. It's been in the family. I bought this property uh, right here in Almorada 30 years ago, almost to the date. This is almost the 30 year anniversary of this property. And let me tell you how, you, how I bought it. What we had here was guys like Ted Williams, the famous baseball player, and other famous fishermen all came down here in this little cottage right here, which was built in 1946, this little cottage by my truck, was a little fishing shack, and they'd all gather and they'd drink whiskey and have fish fries in here, and this was where the Almorada Fishing Club kind of met. Well, this was back in the 50s and back in the 60s. And everything went good, and this, this whole house here, this bigger house here, was built in 48. And uh, again, this is going back, you know, a long time ago, over 70 years. And this property was, a, was kind of a rough property then, now it's, it's all fixed up. But what happened was, in the 60s, this guy by the name of Brown bought it. And everything went good, there were a lot of good fish down here, Florida Keys were the, you know, the fishing capital of the world kind of a deal. What happened was in 19... 80 in the 18 1989 1980 uh, yeah 1989 there was a giant algae bloom in Florida Bay well all the realtors down here got all crazy they said oh gosh all the fish is going to go away we better sell our properties so property values plummeted about 1990 well I came along in 1990 and negotiated to buy this property from Mr. Brown for just a, a, a pittance of, of what it's worth today, just for a fifth of what it's worth today. Bought this property, and then about 10 years later, we decided to upgrade this whole this whole building right here, and we put all Wayne's coat in it. I, I took a jackhammer, and I jackhammered and made a second uh, bathroom in here, to I got it all fixed up, spent about $60,000 on that thing. So we were really upgrading the property. Well, then 2000 came along, 1999, 2000, everybody said, well, the computers are going to crash. What's going to happen is that they can't keep up with the, with the new year, and it's all going to go to heck. So I invited Beverly and Gary Yamamoto down, and we sat here at midnight, 1999 to 2000, and we figured well, the computers are going to crash, we're going to be all out of, out of gas, or get, the whole world's going to shut down, the, we're gonna have, not going to have any power for a couple of days. Well, none of that ever happened. 
there wasn't any computer crash at all when the millennium and the new year took over. So anyway, that was kind of an interesting thing. Uh, <clears throat> then Hurricane Andrew came along in 1992, and uh, that was a pretty, pretty severe storm. Uh, like I say, I, I settled on this property in 1991, so it's been 30 years since, I, since we've owned it. And then in 1992, Hurricane Andrew came in and it flooded everything pretty good, but it wasn't until Wilma, Hurricane Wilma came along and actually put three foot of water. The water got all the way up to this, this receptacle right here. Okay, and there's ice machines and all the freezers were out here and all the, you know, it, it, we had a couple hundred thousand dollars worth of damage, which we got insurance for and we fixed it all back up again. Well then, uh, there were a couple more uh, hurricanes to come along, nothing as bad as Wilma. And uh, so then, about 10 years ago, I said to, to my wife Judy at the time, I said, you know, Judy, I'm not using that property as much as I should. And I know the kids really have we've been lobstering down here for 20 years and all these kind of things. Let's give it to them. Let's, let's deed it to, to Scott, my son, and my daughter, Laura. So I did. I set the paperwork up. And so they own it now. Well, then Scott came in and Laura both, and, and they've, they've put a brand new, oh, man, they really fixed it up. They got brand new landscaping. Look at this beautiful place now. They do a little rental service, but mainly they just use it themselves. And, uh, of course, Scott has this big Freeman down here. That's been a big deal. But all this is really cool, all this, all this landscaping. Look, there's lizards here. There's another thing that's here. There's land crabs. All these big land crabs are all over the place. Sometimes you'll sneak up on them. We used to shoot them with, a, with pellet rifles because they dig big holes in the ground. Try to get rid of them. They're really hard to get rid of them. The other thing that this property has are iguana lizards, big old green iguanas. I don't see any around here, but they eat flowers. And any kind of flower, in fact, see these, these flowers right here? It looks like that something been nibbling at them. I don't know. It's probably those iguana lizards, big old giant, big green ones. Now, when a, an iguana lizard gets pretty big, it gets kind of brown and spotted. It gets four and five feet long. I don't see any right here. The small ones are real green and the big ones are real brown. They swim like fish and they jump across this canal. Anyway, we own all this property. We have a over a thousand foot of waterfront. We keep boats here and it was well a little, little, little kind of a place. There's a mandate here in Florida that you can't cut these, these trees down. These are mainly mangroves. So we can trim them just a little bit, but we're not supposed to cut them at all. So we've really upgraded this property. We put a new, uh, new sidewalks in, gravel. We just, we just got the thing really set up really well. And it's just, it's just I'm so proud of, of Scott and so, so proud of Laura that, uh, that we got this whole thing going. But anyway, I come down here a lot and got big grills. You talking about neat? And here's the neat thing. Right next door is the Lorelei, and and they have bands like every Friday night. I remember one time, a uh, a policeman came over and said, "We've had a lot of complaints about loud music in the area." Well, the music that they were playing is like uh, calypso stuff, uh, and that was really pleasant music. We never we never complained about the music. We're the closest neighbor. They're just a hundred yards away. Uh, Jimmy Buffett would you know play that kind of music. Anyway, we uh, we said no, no, we don't we don't have any problem with the, with the calypso music coming from the the Laurel Eye. That's just a part of the game. So anyway, I'm down here, and uh, <clears throat> it was quite a transition because yesterday, when Scott called me to come down, I was sitting in a little canoe uh, back in Naples, and I had a little another little canoe, a little old town thing, and I'm sitting there by the Walmart in the, on 951, and I'm catching bass. And it's raining, and I'm making a YouTube. This was yesterday. And Scott said, hey, Dad, 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 you got to come down to the Keys. There's Cabrera Snapper. These big, giant Cabrera Snapper are in. It's a full moon. And, uh, and we'll you take lobsters and drop them down on big 80-wide 80, 80 uh, big pen reels and all these big, giant uh, saltwater reels. And we'll catch these big 100-pound uh, <laughs> Cabrera Snapper. Well, we went out, like, like I say, last night. And then you just talked to Sam, of course. And half the crew got sick. It was about four or five-foot waves. And... Windy as could be, it rained like crazy. So we had to come in about one o'clock and we didn't catch any Cabrera snapper. But we're gonna go on out tonight and take care of that. But in the meantime, uh, I'm getting all my tackle ready. Everybody's still asleep right now because it's only eight o'clock in the morning. And uh, we're gonna go out in about an hour, go out for the big dolphin. 
that's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be about 10 of us in the boat again, and we'll have a lot of little spro jigs, a lot of topwater plugs. You know how the dolphins are so, so cool. They're just fun to catch. But anyway, that's what's happening in my world. Hey, I'll keep you updated. I'll keep you posted about all the fish we catch in the next couple days. Hey, thanks for watching, and we'll see you again soon.